Well, hello out there. Welcome again to brand new physics tutorial brought to you by O3 Schools Jam App. We keep on saying this and we keep on meaning it. O3 Schools Jam App is the best jam app you can find out there. The features are top notch. You get access to questions on the different topics. You can practice your mock using your three schools jam app and you could even go through the words or rather the question search maybe find questions pertaining to a particular topic and that is the feature i'll be making use of while teaching you today and you can use that to then such that after each topic you are trying able to go to your jam app search out those questions pertaining to that topic and you can then answer them to be sure that you are well grounded in the topic you have read and you have linked or three schools jump app and um to use this app you simply have to activate it it costs 2500 to activate and yes i know that there are some fraud stars out there some apps you may have wanted to try that have turned you off from the idea of subscribing but i'm here to tell you or three schools jump app does not fail simply follow the steps as shown in the activation of your app and your app shall be activated for you. And with that, let's start off with this new topic. Let's take a look at simple machines. Now, what is a machine, first of all? Um, a machine is a device which makes work easier or faster. Those are general machines. But now we're focusing on simple machines. Now, please take note. Our simple machines are usually mechanically powered, by which sense we mean the human being drives this machine himself. Not using foil, not using battery or any other power source, other than simply applying effort. In a simple machine, we apply effort at one part to overcome a load at another part, implying that we're not touching the load directly. Uh -uh. There's a machine between us and the load. So we're able to apply an effort to one side while the load is being overcome by a different side and your effort must be lower than the load for this to qualify as a machine because if you were to be applying a force of say 200 newton to carry a load of 50 newton well then what's the point of having the machine you might say so a good machine must be able to apply smaller efforts to overcome a bigger load now, um, in the study of simple machines, there are some concepts we have to look at. Some of which I have not mentioned already. The first one is your effort. Effort E. Effort is simply the force which the user applies on the machine. The user pushes on the machine or applies this force by himself on the machine. That is the effort. Then we also have a load. The load is the force which the user wants to overcome with this machine the load is like the output you apply your efforts into the machine then your machine is able to use that effort to carry a load so that load is the force being overcome by your machine then we have something known as mechanical advantage mechanical advantage me Though it has another name, less commonly used but also equally valid, known as force ratio. Now, your mechanical advantage of force ratio, as the name implies, is the ratio of the forces, the ratio of the load to the effort. And obviously, since the load and effort have the same units, the mechanical advantage ends up having no units. So, Me equals load over effort is it enough but then we now have velocity ratio now velocity ratio is the ratio of the distance being moved by the effort to the distance being moved by the load distance moved by effort which we shall symbolize with de over distance being moved by the load dl that velocity ratio and then the fifth um by no least and means any less important is your efficiency the efficiency of this system now efficiency simply measures how useful your machine is 
say I put in a certain amount of work or energy into this machine, what then should be the output of this machine? It's like uh, putting in 100 years of work into a machine, and this machine simply only taking out 50 and using 50. What then is the point? My machine is very, very inefficient. The dream would be to put in 100 joules into this machine and get an output of 100 joules. However, that is physically impossible as long as the current laws of physics have been obeyed because of one simple thing known as friction. We can work to reduce friction, but we cannot truly really work and eliminate friction. We can merely try to reduce its effects. So as long as friction is there, any force you apply, first of all, have to overcome the frictional force, implying that work, first of all, have to be wasted trying to overcome friction before I try to have to now then do work to overcome my load. So that's what we must first of all know. So no machine is efficient 100% because of friction. You can have 99 if it's very, very good, 98, 97. But typically, our exchanges fall within the range of the 80s, the 85s for the good machines. Now, how can I solve for efficiency? Like we already said, we stated this quite clearly. We said that efficiency equals the output work over the input work. What comes out over what goes in. Now remember, please, efficiency is always expressed as a percentage. So generally, you have to multiply by 100. Then, this is output by input. Is there any other way we can express this? Yes. My output is what is going out. What is coming out of my machine is going to the load, what I want to overcome. Therefore, my output work is the same thing as saying work done on the load. Or you could also call this work done by machine all over while the input the input is simply the work being done by my efforts traditionally yes so i can say work done by efforts but at the same time the work done by my efforts where do i put it in i put this work into the machine therefore this is work done on machine so you can call it work done on load over work done by efforts or work done by machine over work done on machine okay so we're getting somewhere now as we are aware what's more for work work is force times distance force times distance therefore for my work done by load we don't to be the load times distance moved by load this is force this is distance while work done by effort to be the effort and the distance moved by effort again force distance so if i look at this and i look at this it should remind me of things we previously just learned we know that ma is load over effort and we also learned that v arrow is distance moved by effort but distance moved by load but this is basically what you get when you flip this right therefore i can replace this guy with mechanical advantage rather than replace this one with simply velocity ratio once it is turned around, it becomes over velocity ratio. Remember, like I said, we always express it in a percentage. So that is my efficiency. It's that simple. But one thing you must remember, please, not trying to forget this. If you come back to this point, the work done by effort will always be the work done on load plus work done against friction implying that before you can actually affect your load you must first share this work by first of all doing some of the work on friction before you don't get to your load now um at this point we have to solve some questions but then we'll recall one small thing the load and the efforts are easy to understand and picture and so solve for mechanical advantage but what happens for the velocity ratio velocity ratio depends on the geometry of the machine the shape of this machine, the way it functions, is what to determine what the velocity ratio should be. And as such, 
we have to now find the way to get the velocity ratio for the common simple machines we have. Now, um, let's start by listing out the machines before we look at the velocity ratios. We have the levers, we have the inclined planes, we have the wages. We have the pulley systems. We have the screw jacks. Um, we also have, sorry, this is now number six. We also have the wheel and axle. And we have the gears. Let's describe each of them and then we shall look at their best ratio. I'm going bottom to top, shall we? Gears. Gears are these um, circular devices with teeth or spokes, as we call them. You can find them within some of your mechanical instruments or your analog wristwatches, things like this. And as one of these gears turn, it's able to hit the other one and then turn that as well. So the one that is being turned by your effort is the driving gear. Why the one that has been turned by your load is the gear, driven gear. As you push one, it pushes the other. And depending on their sizes, they are being used to control speed. That increases speed or decreases speed. So for gears, the VRO is going to be radius or diameter of driving gear over radius or diameter of driven gear so yeah the radius of the driving gear but the radius of the driven gear though in some last situations they can tell you the number of teeth number of teeth on the driven over the number of teeth on the driving gear so, okay so this is actually the most common ones when dealing with your gears. Then we have a wheel and the axle. Wheel and the axle simply are um, cylinders, basically, but one attached to the other. Something of this nature. So we have this bigger cylinder, the smaller cylinder attached to it. Now the bigger one is the wheel, and the smaller one is the axle. So as you turn the wheel, the axle turns. And you can either use that to lift weights and other things. Now, for a wheel and axle, your V arrow is radius or diameter of wheel over the radius or diameter of the axle. Straightforward. Next up, we have the screw jack. The screw jack is simply a mechanical device used to lift your cars up. If you've ever changed the tire of a car, You've doubt this the jack. However, there's five types of jack. We are actually trying to describe the type of jack, which looks somehow like this. It is, uh, you know, you stand it on your, under your car, and there's something here. So as you rotate this handle, this guy can raise up to raise your car up, or as you're losing it, it comes down to drop your car back down. That's basically a screw jack. And the screw jack, for every time you turn this guy which you call the tummy bar this is a tummy bar every time you turn it around once your jack raises up a distance of your screw of one pitch and as a result the VR of your screw jack is 2 pi times the length of tummy bar since we are going in a circle over pitch very simple Pulley systems, these ones are one of the easiest to describe. Simply a circle rope on one end, which you apply a photon, and your load can be here. Now, in the block and tackle systems, they try to make use of more than one pulley, usually tied together in different ways. Now, for a pulley system, you don't have to solve once you get in the VR. Your VR simply becomes the number of pulleys, no calculation necessary. And that will take us to wages, a wage, a wage, a wage. Now, um, wages are simply kind of like this. 
they can be used to in some cases when place like this to raise load like pushing them against the load when there's a surface to help to raise it up or like in the head of your axe it can be used to actually tear wood so as it goes through your axe or your wood as your axe head goes through your wood it's separating it that's a wedge and for your wedge your vr is slant height of wedge over the thickness of the wedge so the slant height which is this one year over the thickness which is this um we are up to inclined planes inclined plane is actually the most basic of basic of simple machines it's simply done by putting a surface at an angle and then you can now roll load down from a height or push them up a height now you can play simply very simple there is some basic trigonometry sorry which goes into getting the formula what you need to know is that the vr equals to one over sine theta keeping in mind that theta must be the angle to the horizontal horizontal never ever 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 vertical and that leads us to just one more machine which is the pulley now um, in your pulley what is happening in your pulley what is happening sorry your levers we're looking at levers sorry not pulley we're done with pulleys already now in your levers there are three classes of levers or three orders of levers depending on how you want to say it the first class the second class and the third class or again if you prefer the first order second order and third order levers now in your levers there are three distinct components the effort, the place where you apply your force, the load, the place where you overcome your load, and then a fulcrum or pivot, which is where these components are sort of knotted or joined together. So, under your levers, know the first class, second class, and third class. It's simply known in the way in which these components are arranged. You can remember it, this is the acronym. Elf, we are going upwards when saying this acronym. So, yeah, this first one is your first class ever, second, and third. Now, these give you the center component. If the fulcrum is at the center, there must be a first class lever. So, you can be having something like this, a port fulcrum load as a first class lever. Examples are scissors, you know, you hand your hand at one inch. The pivot at the center, then paper or whatever to tear at the other side. So your scissors, your cutlass, those are first class levers. Um, second class is effort load, then fulcrum. Good example is a wheelbarrow or a nut cracker. You have the effort at one end, the load at the middle before the fulcrum. While last but not least, your third order levers. These are fulcrum effort loads. You have the effort staying at the center. Effort is at the middle. And um, examples of these, you can see one of these in your sugar tongs. In which case, you try to pick up something, you know, so something of this nature. Sorry for my bad drawing. I'm terrible. Um, something like this. So, your fulcrum is right here. You are going to apply your efforts somewhere here to clamp this thing together while you are picking up whatever you want is your load with this edge and uh, in this case the first ratio is usually simply gotten using the geometry of the shape this one's really quite simple and now i know the velocity ratio of all my different types of simple machines i know how to solve for efficiency and now we are trying ready to tackle one or two questions so we simply have to open our old three schools drum app on our mobile devices, you can put it on your phone, your Android phone, or your Windows laptop. So let's go. Um, let's just open my phone right here. Okay. So, our O3 Schools Jam app. Let's see. Our first question comes from the year 2014, 2014. And we are looking at question number 14. So we are looking at questions now. 
Question one. A machine whose efficiency is 75%. A machine whose efficiency is 75%. And then simply divide this by 100. So move the percentage 0.75. It's used to lift a load of 1,000 newton. The load is 1,000 newton. Calculate the effort put into the machine. The effort being put into this machine, which we want to find, we do not know. If it has a velocity ratio of 4, and we are going to that the arrow is 4, that means our work quite easy. We don't have to know which type of machine it is because we already know the V arrow. So we can simply say efficiency is MA over V arrow. We know that the efficiency is 0 0.75, and then MA is unknown. Why I want to get V arrow, which is 4. So cross multiply. MA would be 0 0.75 times 4. And if you press that with your calculator, you ought to be getting 3. So once I know my MA, as you see, remember that my MA is load over effort. I want to find effort. So if I cross multiply, effort is load over MA. The load, as you can see, there is 1000 noting. And MA, as we've gotten, is 3. 1000 over 3, which your calculator gives you 333.33 Newton. And that is our answer to our first question. So you see, very, very, very simple. That's option A. 2004. Question 14. Let's try a new question. This is from 2013. Question 12. What effort will a machine of efficiency 90%? Efficiency is 90%. I remember over 100, that's 0 0.9. Efficiency 90%. To lift a load of 180 newton. To lift a load of 180 newton. If its effort arm is twice as long as its load arm. Effort arm, this time by effort, is twice, which is two times the load arm, DL. So, first things first, V arrow equals to DE over DL. This has to be by effort is 2 times the by load. When this has to be by load, cancel out, V arrow is 2. So, you see, these are just very, very simple. Efficiency will be MA over V arrow. Efficiency is 0 0.9. MA is unknown, but V arrow is 2, as we've gotten here. So if I cross multiply, MA equals 0 0.9 times 2, which is 1.8. So at this point, I know my mechanical advantage. And just like before, if I just take this from here, like we did previously, we can see that the effort is going to be load over MA. So what's the load? It was given to us 180. What's MA? 1.8. 180 divided by 1.8 is 100 newton. So you see, these are really truly simple. There's no problem there. Trying our third question. This one tells us um, that we are dealing with a block and tackle system. This block and tackle is used to raise a load. Oh, my bad, this is 2012, number 14, for those of us checking out the race course jump up. Now, um, this block and tackle is used to raise a load of 25 newton. Load is 25 newton. Through a vertical distance of 30 meters. That means distance moved by load is 30 meters. What is the efficiency of this system? If the work done against friction is... 1500 joules. Huh. Now, this may look a little bit confusing. But just remember, since there's work done against friction, you have to find the other types of work. I have a load and this has moved by load. Therefore, I should have to find the work done by my load. So, work done by load or on load would be load and distance moved by load. Load is 25. 
is transmitting loads by this load is 30. 25 times 30 should give me 750 joules. Now, if you remember, in terms of load, efficiency is work done on load over work done by effort. In time that I have to find work done by effort first. How do I get work done by effort? Again, recalling, work done by effort is work done by load plus the work being done against friction. That will be 750 plus 1,500. Yeah, so that will give me 2,250 joules. So now I know work done by effort. So this will give me that work done by load equals, um, trying to get my calculator open right here. I'm looking for efficiency, sorry. Efficiency will be equals to work done by load over work done by effort. The work done by load is 750. Work done by effort is 2,250. So, what do we get opening the calculator? Um, that's 750 dividing 2,250. I'm sorry, I'm multiplying instead of dividing. And uh, when we finish this division, we realize that we are getting, sorry, just doing this one more time, we're getting 33. 0.33 or if you're going to be exact this is 0 0.3333 if you're expressing in percent that will be multiplied by 100 to get 33.33 percent but if you look at your options you can tell for a fact that that is not even close to any of them which just means that something is wrong right now this is one of those cases where you have to be a bit smart if you analyze all your options or on your solving Realize that in your solving, you are sure you didn't make any mistake. Therefore, that issue must come from the question. Now, if this was to happen in your exam, I'm not quite sure what to do. My recommendation was maybe to guess any answer and move on. But in this case, when I took a look at it, I realized if there's to be an error, I'm realizing that the work being done by my load is very, very small compared to the work done against friction. And typically, in standard machines, the work done against friction ought to be small compared to the work done by my load. So it is possible that there's simply an extra zero here which will create an error. Let's test that and see. If I remove this extra zero from here, 750 plus 150 becomes 900 joules. So instead of 2,250 here, I should be having 900. And if I try 750 divided by 900, I suddenly get 0 0.8333, which in percentage is 83.33%. And if I recall, that is my option C, yes, option C. So you do see, this is my correct answer. And while if you had given up, you meant to have gotten the answer, you simply have to be able to correct these questions smartly. If you are going to correct the questions, not correct them because you suddenly did not just see the answer. You should only try to create questions when you solved and you are 100% sure your solving was correct, but you still did not see the answer. Okay, so let's try this and solve a few more. We've done just three. Um, we have this next one from the year 2009. 2009, question number 12. This one says, if a heavy barrel is rolled up a plane inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal, and if I go to the horizontal theta is 30 degrees, find the velocity ratio. This is very, very simple. Now, if this plane is being inclined, I mean, it's an inclined plane, and the formula as we know for the V arrow is 1 over sine theta. That would be 1 over sine 30. Now, this is one of those moments where we have to advise all jump students without those going for engineering or going for medical line, biological or physical sciences. Please try and pay special attention to mathematics because now we have been up to find sine 30. And if you studied mathematics, you'd have learned your special angles. It's not just saying, no, I'm going for medicine. I do not need maths. In physics, you are doing calculations. Your knowledge of mathematics 
were coming because from there you should know that sine 30 is 1 over 2. See the reason why we know this? And if you do 1 over divide 1 over, this over here can become divide by 1 over 2. This divide can become times. So 1 times 2 over 1. And 1 times 2 is 2. So you see, very, very, very simple. Our answer is option D. Knowledge of mathematics remains important. Okay. Now it's a still yet another question on simple machines and the machines are really proving themselves to be quite simple to solve as well um that is our number five question this one states okay a machine has a velocity ratio of four if it requires 800 newton to overcome a load of 1600 newton what is the efficiency of the machine we saw something like this before. Um, we know mechanical advantage is load over effort. So the load is 1,600 as stated, and the force required to overcome its efforts is 800 newton. That's two. And we know the velocity ratio is four. And for efficiency, it is ma over vr will be two over four times 100, and that shall give us 50 percent. Option C. See, these are truly, truly quite simple. Okay, let's peruse our app for a couple more. Um, for this next one, 2005, question 9, we don't even have to solve. In an ideal wheel and axle system, a big arrow stands for the radius of the wheel, and small arrow is the radius of the axle. What's the mechanical advantage? Now you may say, Mechanical advantage has nothing to do with arrow or not. So I was, I mean, kind of mechanical advantage doing with radius. What you have to remember is they said it's an ideal machine. If it is ideal, it means the efficiency is now 100%. And as you are aware, efficiency is M over V arrow. When this efficiency becomes ideal, it means that this value here shall be 1 and therefore MA equals to v arrow so in reality what they're asking you for is your v arrow i know v arrow for wheel and axle is radius of wheel big arrow for radius of axle small arrow our answer is obviously option b see no need to over apply much efforts we can simply get our answer okay uh, moving on 2002 question number three the year is 2002, and the question is number three. This is our question number seven. Okay. A wheel and axle is used to raise a load of 500 newton by the application of effort of 250 newton. So let me just solve them quickly now. We know MA must be load over effort. So the load is 500 newton. Effort is 250. That gives me 2 as my MA. If the radii, the plural of radius, if the radii of the wheel and axle are 0 0.4 and 0 0.1 centimeters respectively, V arrow is, as we just stated here, radius of wheel over radius of axle. The wheel is 0 0.4, the axle is 0 0.1. And that gives me 4. Find the efficiency. Do I have to finish? This is pretty much just like this. Efficiency will be 2 over 4 times 100, which is 50%. And that's option C. And things like these are why we study our past questions. Because you can see, the mechanisms of the questions are not much different. Time mechanical advantage, time velocity ratio, and you are off to the races. Um, we have another question now. This is purely theoretical. The efficiency of a machine is always less than 100% because we know it is because of friction, right? But now let's look at the options. The velocity ratio is always greater than mechanical advantage. Okay, keep that at the back of your mind. Work output is always greater than work input. Effort applied is always greater than the load. Then load lifted is always greater 
that the effort applied now um they're asking us why is it always less than those load and effort comparisons does not explain why it is always less than so we don't have to think about those ones at all they are not factors in the one we we'll think about first is option b which says work output is always greater than work input now look at that is work output actually greater than work input no work input is actually greater than work output so option b is actually quite wrong which should mean i should go and take a close look at option a the still ratio is always greater than mechanical advantage if you look at this example right here ma is two when vra is four that's why it is less as mean the way I switched if ma was four and vra was two and this would be greater than a hundred percent well in all the examples we've solved you realize that the ma is always being smaller than vr or in other words vr is always greater than ma and that in its essence explains why my efficiency is always less than 100 percent so my answer is definitely option a see these are the kind of questions we are seeing in this topic they are simple you can go to your three schools app to find more questions and using these same methods we've learned yes we shall be able to solve the questions and at this point i'd like to thank you very much for attending this class um brought to you again by your o3 schools jam app please get your app and activate it to help you greatly um my name is Athanasius. please subscribe to this channel for more videos where we shall give you tutorials across a wide variety of subjects and topics and also useful information as you get ready to take your jam examination thank you very much